Tulsi Gabbard's words ring with a chilling truth, shedding light on the dangerous consequences of unchecked governmental power and the deep psychological wounds it can inflict on individuals. Her experiences are not just a warning. They are a vivid illustration of the vital need to safeguard personal freedoms and keep state authority in check, lest we find ourselves swallowed by the kind of fear and insecurity she so poignantly describes. You know, Tulsi, not that it matters, it doesn't, it doesn't even compare in any way to what you're going through and have been through, but, you know, I was told by Jim Jordan on this show that my social media was suppressed in 2020. Uh, I've had my private text messages on three separate occasions released to the public without any, any, any knowledge to, of, or permission of mine whatsoever. You are describing an Orwellian nightmare. The idea that is of, of somebody that served their country, former congresswoman, that this is happening to you and that people are willing to talk about it. Why do I suspect that those whistleblowers are going to be the ones that end up getting attacked here? Well, we already know that the TSA has launched an investigation into those who leaked this information in complete defiance of the Whistleblower Protection Act and in, in taking an action that can only be seen as retaliatory. I, I give them great credit for having the courage to stand up for what's right and for our right to life, liberty and the pursuit of happiness in their surveillance of me and my family. Uh, that is what they have taken away from us. Liberty, freedom the ability to speak our minds, exercise our First Amendment rights. They have violated our Fourth Amendment right to privacy. And, and that, that is not something that can be undone, Sean. This is something that I will have to live with now for the rest of my life, constantly looking over my shoulder and wonder, wondering who is watching me, who is following me, what conversations of mine are they listening to, and what are they going to do? How are they going to try to weaponize that information that they are seeing or that they are gathering? Because as we know, under the Biden-Harris administration, they have no hesitation in weaponizing all means possible, all tools available to them to, to target their and go after and their political opponents, anyone they deem as a threat to their power. In particular, under the Biden-Harris administration, Gabbard's concerns about the expanding reach of the federal government strike a chord with many who value the delicate balance of power. Her warnings underscore the conservative belief that when a government grows too strong, it can easily tip into tyranny, especially when it begins to target and suppress those who dare to dissent. The weaponization of government agencies as tools of political retribution not only undermines democracy, but also erodes the very foundations of our constitutional principles. The psychological toll of living under constant surveillance, the relentless invasion of privacy, and the gnawing anxiety of not knowing who might be listening is profound. Gabbard's narrative paints a haunting picture of how this omnipresent fear can suffocate the human spirit, leaving individuals feeling isolated, alienated, and powerless in the face of an all-seeing state. The psychological damage inflicted by such a life is not merely theoretical. It manifests in chronic stress, anxiety, and a creeping sense of paranoia that can erode one's self-esteem, autonomy, and trust in others. As the public listens to Gabbard, many will likely see her as a symbol of resistance against government overreach, a beacon for the need to fiercely defend individual freedom in an age where state power threatens to overshadow the very essence of what it means to live freely and authentically. Her story is not just a personal struggle, it is a rallying cry for all who value liberty to stand united against the encroaching tide of authoritarianism.